This is Twit. Google One is has announced, uh, well, Google, uh, in the guise of Google One, adding a VPN, bringing up a VPN service initially for Android. Um, they've just announced they're going to be getting into the VPN business. Um, that is, Google has. They'll be adding a no additional charge VPN facility, first for Android users only. Scuttlebutt is, that's just the tip of the iceberg, though. They're adding this to their existing paid Google One service. Um, and as I understand it, I don't pay Google, uh, but uh, for free, you get 15 gigs of Google Drive and Gmail and, you know, sort of, you know, cloud stuff. And if that's not enough, then for $10 a month or $100 a year, that you can expand that to two terabytes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's which, basically what, what Google Drive used to be. They call it Google One now with some additional okay. features. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So because Google is Google, the announcement of them doing a VPN has been met with some well-deserved eye rolling. Uh, actually, <laughs> Proton VPN just went off. Uh, I, if, if, we're going to come back to this because of some interesting technology that they will be incorporating into this. With some some stuff, some cool stuff we've never talked about before, and maybe I'll we'll talk about other VPN providers. But but <laughs> Proton VPN was oh, I mean you know. Google's a big competitor, right? So that's the issue, you know. I mean, and it, they yeah. probably say, "Well, the, you know, you don't. Do you want the biggest advertising company in the world to be running your VPN?" But Google's exactly Google's been always exactly. pretty good about not, you know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel well, about it. And and well, so so that's why we're here talking about this. Yeah. So they are saying all the right things. Google is, uh, and they are bringing, as I mentioned, some new technology to bear, which has never been done on a VPN, which Google can afford to do due to their specific posture. So, first of all, to sort of set this, here's what here's how they Google describe the problem and what they are the way they're intending to solve it. They said, and actually some interesting stats I hadn't known, I didn't realize VPNs had were like this popular. They said demand for VPNs is growing. With evidence that it's becoming more mainstream, yeah, up to twenty-five percent. So. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I, I think that's yeah, what we're like, experiencing too. Yeah. Wow, twenty-five yeah. percent of all internet users mm -hmm. accessed a VPN mm -hmm. within just the last month mm -hmm. of they said of twenty nineteen. So that was even pre-COVID. They said, unfortunately, not all VPN providers have been proven to be trustworthy. Okay, this is, you know, Google. But still, as you said, Leo, I'm glad you did. That, you know, I, you know Google, well, of course, they've got now, now got the DOJ breathing down yeah, their neck. So, you know. yeah. You, uh, here's the, I guess I would read the privacy statement carefully, but they're not going right. to lie in the privacy statement. Well, so. no, and but, but, so, right. So they said some services are vulnerable. <laughs> others request unnecessary access to their users' data huh, or monetize the same data, <laughs> again, huh, mm -hmm. uh, that users are utilizing the VPN to keep private and secure, while others fail to de deliver on the promise of not logging their users' online activity. So again, Google is going to be a non-logger. They said, with growing demand for better privacy in a mixed landscape of solutions, we have used our expertise in privacy, cryptography, and infrastructure to build a Google grade VPN that provides additional security and privacy to online connectivity without undue performance sacrifices. The VPN by Google One users on, oh, sorry, with VPN by Google One, users online activity is not identifiable to the VPN and not logged by the VPN. We believe a VPN must be transparent and robust. That's why we've open sourced our client and will provide a third party audit of the end to end solution to make them externally verifiable. Privacy is at the core of the products and services we build. 
Okay. With VPN by Google One, we will never use the VPN connection to track, log, or sell your online activity. Some minimum logging is required to ensure quality of service. And, and I've seen online people attacking Google about like what that minimum is. Th th those are specious attacks. I mean, the, you know, Google is, as you said, Leo, they, I mean, the, Google's going to do what they're going to do. But then they're not going to breach their own privacy guarantees. And we could argue they don't need to, but we'll get there. In they a don't need to. They exactly. said, right. But your network traffic or IP associated with the VPN is never logged. To demonstrate how our design works, we've open sourced the code that runs on a user's device. And in the coming Perfect. months, we will be open sourcing the server side Perfect. user authentication mechanism as well as providing the results of a third-party audit, currently underway. These will provide further assurances of how user data is handled and how robust the VPN's security is. So here's, I'm wrapping this up, here's the cool bit. Open sourcing our VPN and providing an audit are just some of the steps we're taking to ensure user privacy. While building VPN by Google One, which is you know the formal name, we realized it was important to strengthen some of the systems that are often attacked or compromised in order to access users' personal data. Traditional VPNs can sometimes compromise a user's identity or online activity by linking the usage of their service to the activity they conduct by means of a session ID. This ID could allow VPN operators or attackers that compromise their infrastructure to eavesdrop and identify users and their activity. We wanted to eliminate that vulnerability by separating the authentication of the subscriber from their use of the service by employing a cryptographic blinding step between user subscription validation and connecting to the VPN, we give users a stronger guarantee that their online activity won't be tied back to their identity. That's what's new. So it, the, the technique is known as RSA, RSA blind signing, which Google will be using. And it's a real thing. It's actually old, like 1998, the, the concept was, was first developed. It provides a means for Google to verify that a Google One, a, you know, paying account holder has the right to use their VPN service, yet without revealing who that account holder is. Um, we've never discussed blind signing technology, but I think it would make a terrific topic. So we will. Um, and although, as I mentioned before, Google hasn't yet said so publicly the word on the street is that this service for Android will eventually be offered widely across, you know, Google properties and, you know, like other clients for other desktops and so forth. So, you know, I love the idea that their VPN itself is blinded to its user's identity as an account holder. And, and frankly, I think that Google probably had no choice but to do that if they wanted to provide a VPN service since they've, they're so strong now uh, as we mentioned, you know, the DOJ is breathing down their neck. But we also all know that a user's browser's Google tagged cookies, the instant they emerge from Google's VPN endpoint, will immediately scoot over to the nearest Google server to report in. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be like like a zero hop. I mean, it's going to be in the same building, right? It's just going to go bing. Now I'm at the Google server. So it's not as though the VPN provides any additional anonymity compared with any other VPN service. But, and here's the key, I think, Google's use of cryptographic account authentication blinding means that at least it doesn't provide any less anonymity than the use of any other VPN service. And there's a lot more to be said about this. We'll be covering it in much more detail in the future. So anyway, uh, 
you know, and they make a strong point. They've got a strong infrastructure. They're doing all kinds of cool stuff by looking at like like using DNN queer, DNS queries to see to figure out where the user is and and then automatically tie the user to the nearest VPN endpoint. You know, I mean, they're, they're Google. They understand infrastructure. They've got a big infrastructure. Um, the, the promise is that initially any Android user who's also a Google One subscriber would be able to get the arguably useful benefits of running a VPN from their handset past the local you know, Wi-Fi hotspot, wherever they are, past that hotspot's ISP and directly to Google um, where their tra tra traffic would then emerge onto the Internet. And yes, where all the Google cookies that they're already carrying would then instantly be uh, gobbled up by Google. But that's going to happen no matter whose VPN service yeah. you yeah. use. I love your... I love how you've personified them. They're scrambling over. <laughs> the cookies are, oh, my home, my home. <laughs> did okay, they I'm say is it, did they say what they're going to charge for that, just out of curiosity? Free. So if you have a Google One account, which isn't free, but if you have right. that, you will get it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I could see why uh, I could see why Proton's a little worried. <laughs> yeah, that's a little yeah. scary. Uh, and yet I think that there will be plenty of people who will say, yeah, whatever, uh -huh. I'm going to use a VPN from a company that's not, not Google, not in the advertising yep. business. I can understand that, too.